A new NASA video shows how large this year's ozone hole is over Antarctica. It grew to 9.6 million square miles, roughly the size of North America. That's the 13th largest since 1979. A colder than usual winter in the Southern Hemisphere contributed to its size. Ozone protects the Earth from UV radiation. Lesson number two. Up there, there are holes in the sky. It's like Swiss cheese. Up there, it's like... Took me a while to figure that out. Swiss cheese. When the flare hit, it completely fried the ozone, and then the EMP took out everything electrical just like that. It was a good thing I was at work. What are you doing? I was locating the cheese. Come here. But Finch, you said up there it's like Swiss cheese. I was locating the hey, cheese. This is not a joke. I don't wear this UV suit for fun. This is not a joke. I don't wear this UV suit for fun. Why are you imitating me? You said, watch, then imitate. Stop imitating me. Sorry. And stop apologizing. Stopping. Wildfire smoke may be more harmful than we think. Researchers in Germany say it may actually be depleting ozone. They found a dip in ozone after last year's massive wildfires in Siberia and the year before, following Australia's devastating blazes. Scientists say they admittedly can't prove a connection, but they believe as fires become more severe, they're sending smoke way up into the stratosphere where it's eroding ozone. Of course, ozone protects the earth from UV radiation, which can cause things like skin cancer and cataracts. It also helps regulate the earth's temperature. The hole in the ozone is typically caused by chemicals and the temperature in the stratosphere. Despite the possible wildfire link, experts say the ozone layer is actually recovering due to the 1987 Montreal Protocol. The treaty banned the emission of ozone-depleting substances. Uh, ozone controls this lethal small segment of the spectrum, the ultraviolet spectrum, which just barely penetrates the stratospheric ozone because ozone is the only molecule that removes ultraviolet photons between 200 and 300 nanometers, which is exactly where DNA absorbs ultraviolet photons. And an ultraviolet photon absorbed by DNA breaks the base pair across the double helix and it initiates cancer. So it, the ozone is an extremely rare if you compress the total ozone column from the stratosphere to the floor of this office, it would only be an eighth of an inch thick. So tiny, tiny amount of ozone. It has dominant control, total control over that crucial segment of the ultraviolet spectrum that, that kills organisms on the surface and initiates cancer. But ozone doesn't control the climate. On the other hand, climate intimately controls ozone because climate controls the amount of water going into the stratosphere and the amount of water in the stratosphere and, uh, decidedly controls the ozone concentration. We diagnosed the chemistry over the Antarctic and the Arctic in the winter that led to the Antarctic ozone hole and then comparable large removal of ozone over the Arctic in the late winter. And diagnosing that chemistry, we realized that it's exactly the same chemistry that's triggered by storms injecting water vapor into the stratosphere, except in this case it's over the United States in the summer rather than the polar regions in the winter. Structure that defines the overall dynamics of the atmosphere and how that couples into a combination of weather, um, severe storms, um, changes in the uh, ice structures, uh, shifts in the temperature difference between the tropics and the polar regions. Uh, so the climate is set up as a feedback structure that is highly coupled so that changes in one part, for example, loss of Arctic ice, cascades into a whole array of different fundamental changes in the structure of climate. For example, Right now, the current climate structure is built around a very cold polar region and a very warm tropics. And because of that, we have a very, very dry stratosphere. 
and that's a unique climate structure. If we lose Arctic ice and the temperature difference starts to decrease between the tropics and the polar regions, uh, the overturning structure of, of the atmosphere will relax and water will enter the stratosphere, we'll have a very warm, um, uh, very wet stratosphere, and the result of that is that the temperature difference between the equator and the pole will essentially vanish. And that completely changes the way the climate structure of the Earth behaves. But more than that, with a moist stratosphere, uh, ozone is removed from the stratosphere because we have chlorine and bromine that are present there because of CFC release. And so uh, that's going to be profoundly damaging to life on the, on the surface, not just human beings, but also all of our staple crops that provide food for the, for the population, all of that.